Hi, in this video we're going to be looking at the respiration reaction. Respiration is one of the most important chemical processes involved in life. It is a series of chemical reactions, all of which are catalyzed by enzymes that release energy from glucose. The energy that is created is used for a variety of different functions. For example, the energy that is created is used to build larger molecules from smaller molecules, such as the building of proteins from amino acids. Also, mammals and birds use the energy to regulate their body temperature. The energy is also used to allow muscles to contract, which facilitates movement. And a final example is the energy is used for cell division. Respiration occurs in all living cells, from single-celled organisms to more complex organisms. There are two different types of respiration. We have aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration. However, we need to know that respiration is the chemical reaction that takes place in cells and it is not us breathing. Breathing is the process of moving air into and out of our lungs to facilitate gas exchange. Let's first have a look at aerobic respiration. Aerobic respiration is the breaking down of food substances in the presence of oxygen. The chemical process releases a large amount of energy. The equation for aerobic respiration is that glucose and oxygen react together to form carbon dioxide and water and energy. We sometimes place the energy in brackets because it's not actually a substance. The balance symbol equation is C6H12O6, which is glucose, plus 6O2, which is oxygen. The glucose and oxygen react together to form 6CO2, which is carbon dioxide, plus 6H2O, which is water. We can check if the formula above is balanced by checking if the number of each element on either side of the arrow is the same. On the left side of the arrow, we have six carbons, 12 hydrogens and 18 oxygens. Six of these oxygen atoms come from the glucose and 12 come from the oxygen. We get 12 from the oxygen because there's six molecules of oxygen and each molecule contains two oxygen atoms. So we do 6 times 2, which gives us 12. On the right side of the equation, we have 6 carbons, 12 hydrogens, and 18 oxygens. 12 of these oxygens come from the carbon dioxide, and 6 come from the water. We can see that the number of atoms at each element is the same on the left side of the arrow and on the right side of the arrow. Therefore, we can say that this equation is balanced. Aerobic respiration is happening all of the time in cells in animals and plants and it's essential for all of the activities that were listed above. Most of the respiration reactions happen inside the mitochondria of cells. The mitochondria are tiny structures found in cells. So that's aerobic respiration looked at. Now let's have a look at anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration occurs when there's not enough oxygen. If there was sufficient oxygen available, we would only see aerobic respiration. However, if there was a less than sufficient amount of oxygen available, we would also see anaerobic respiration occur. Anaerobic respiration is the release of a relatively small amount of energy in cells by the breakdown of food substances when there is no oxygen available. I say that it's a relatively small amount of energy, and we're comparing this to the amount of energy that is released by aerobic respiration, which is respiration with oxygen. The reason why less energy is produced in anaerobic respiration compared to aerobic respiration is because anaerobic respiration is the incomplete breakdown of glucose. This results in energy and lactic acid forming. And we can see the word equation here. Glucose breaks down to form lactic acid and energy. Energy is in brackets again because it isn't a substance. So let's have a look at what happens during vigorous exercise. During vigorous exercise, your body cannot supply enough oxygen to your muscles, which results in the cells switching from aerobic respiration to anaerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration is not the most efficient way of converting glucose into energy, and a byproduct of anaerobic respiration is the buildup of lactic acid. Lactic acid also causes muscle fatigue, which is where the muscles get tired and stop contracting efficiently. However, anaerobic respiration allows muscles to produce energy for a while when there is no oxygen available. The buildup of lactic acid is also known as oxygen debt. Oxygen debt is where your body must repay the oxygen that it did not get during the anaerobic respiration process. It is also why we keep breathing heavily for a while after vigorous exercise. 
Oxygen from the air that we have breathed in is taken into the bloodstream and travels to cells. The cells remove the lactic acid by oxidizing it to produce carbon dioxide and water. This brings us to the end of this video. The key thing to take from the video is that aerobic respiration is respiration with oxygen and anaerobic respiration is respiration without oxygen. For more content, quizzes and past papers, please go on to www.elevise.co.uk.